Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Craft. So today I am actually filming some stuff for Hochanda because um, they are still running, which is fantastic for, you know, crafters, um, you know, a lot of people. That is how they get through the day. They, they've got to know the people on Hochanda and they view them as friends and they're in the living room. I remember when we went for the induction day. Um, one of the bosses was telling us that um, they had, you know, they do these dream days and they said they actually had people crying in their arms saying how wonderful um, it was to have this sort of day um, with them and um, yeah, it just really connects some people. So it's great that they found a way to keep it going. So obviously with the current situation, it's not a good idea for the demonstrators to be um, going down there. I'm a bit gutted because I, I mean I've only been to I've been to the studios twice once for my induction day and once for my first show and I do love it down there it's a lovely atmosphere so I'll be glad when things go back to normal and we can do that so I am now in the process of filming demos for them so um, I'm going to sort of amalgamate I'm going to do the full demo for m myself here on YouTube um, and elements of it will be going on to um, Hachanda because obviously they have like shorter slots. So I have a whole project planned. Um, so this project will sort of be um, broken up into three segments to be aired on Hachanda hopefully. Um, but I will still have to edit quite a lot out of it because of obviously they've got the time constraints of the hour show and how many things they want to show and all of this sort of stuff. So I have this idea, whether it's going to work or not, I don't know, of making a shaker frame using my new Under the Sea stamps. So I have this frame that I had clearly painted ages ago in hot pink. Um, and I don't really want hot pink for an under the sea theme. So I am now going to paint this with this green. I'm going to let it dry and give it a second coat. And then I'm actually going to paint over it with white and sand it back. So this particular part will not be seen on Hachanda. It'll sort of be like a pre-prepared frame ready to go. What I am planning on showing on Hachanda is the water colouring of the stamps. Um, some little tips with alcohol inks and then just the assembling of it together but here we've got the full version so I'm going to let that dry and come do a second coat and come back to you when we're ready to put a white coat on right I honestly do not know what sort of paint I used before on this but it is not wanting to be covered over I went over this with white because my original idea was that I was going to um put white over it and sort of sand it and have a bit of a, a distressed look but whatever I whatever paint I used <laughs> to paint it pink in the first place um, it just keeps reactivating it and honestly when I went um, when I went round with um, what am I trying to say oh, when I went round with the white it just all the pink came through um, or at least with the teal it sort of blended to make a sort of darker blue a purpley colour which still sort of works with my under the sea theme now I wasn't quite intending the black to be quite this heavy but um, I'm working with it now um, so yeah now I've sort of got black <laughs> oh dear and that's been one of those days and I'm desperate for a cup of tea I said I've just finished this minute filming so you can see that pink look can you see that pink just don't know what paint I used but whatever it is it does not want to be covered up that is for sure so I've gone on a bit heavy handed with um, the black but what I may do is um, come in with um, a bit of um, gilding wax or something of that description with it actually I might even um, get some embossing um, frontage or something on it okay 
I'm going to try drying that and uh, see what happens. Let's hope the pink doesn't get through that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to add a bit of gold gilding wax on this. To be honest, I would, with the colours of black and teal, I'd be more inclined to go with a silver, but um, I've already got gold in um, the acetate that I plan on putting behind this. So to give the whole project a cohesive look, I am going to stick with adding gold um, gilding wax. I'm still managing to create a bit of a, it's not quite what I envisioned when I first started ma making the project. I was thinking of some sort of like, you know, distressed white project, but um, yeah, whatever it was, that I had under there, it's refusing to be hidden, so we're just having to, <laughs> we're just having to go with it, but that's okay. Right, so I am going to just add this and then we'll buff it up, and then what I am going to do is add some um, frontage to the sides of it. Now, I'm not putting that in after because I'm going to be playing with acetate after and putting that into the frame. So, if I was to do that afterwards. Although it's heat resistant acetate, um, it will still warp, warp slightly and that's not the look that I want. Sorry, I've gone quite heavy handed in that corner, but that's maybe where I put all the odds and ends. So we've still sort of got like a, a teal and a black and a gold. We've still got different uh, colours going on here. Um, so I'm just going to get my rag and oh, I tell you, whatever is behind this stuff is so sticky. Yeah, it's not wanting me to. Yeah, it's not letting me buff that up like I normally do. And you see the pinks coming through again. <laughs> I'm going to have to um, varnish this or something after I'm done. Just to, I'm going to have to. Right, so we're not going to buff it because if we do, the whatever it is that's underneath here is going to fight through. I don't know what I've put on it. I seriously don't know. But it's still that pink just, it's just I didn't think when I started that this was gonna you know, I just thought we we're gonna cover one I do not know what product I see I would have sworn that I used dilution paint, but there's no way dilution paint should be reacting like this. And it's like almost like no matter what I do with it, it doesn't um it's not fully drying, it's almost quite tacky. So I'm gonna have to leave that unbuffed which sort of goes against the green, but it's better than having the pink um, showing through. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to grab a piece of a um, bit of glycerin and I'm just going to um, tap some glycerin in various places around um, the corner of this um, little frame here. Okay. And then I think I'll do I'll just a little bit up here as well. Oops. Okay. Wonder if the glycerin will react with the pink. Okay. <laughs> so the reason I do that is it almost acts a little bit like a Versamark, um, like a Versamark ink pad would. Um, and because I do find even with the frontage, although you're supposed to be able to sort of um, leave it be, as it were, um, it doesn't start picking up all the bits until the embossing powder starts to melt and I quite often find that it's blown away by the time it's beginning to melt. So I've always found just putting some form of sticky on underneath it has been of huge benefit um, to me. So I've put on, that's golden sand embossing powder, so that's um, suitable. This is um, an aged teal so again we've got the brasses and the golds similar to the colours that we've painted that so I'm going to pop that on as well and then once I've got those few bits um, sticking I will grab some of the fleeks and bits and bobs and we will see how we go. So it's good just to be sort of flexible with your projects because <laughs> sometimes you just don't know what direction it'll take and what I may attempt to do is dry gesso after to, but to be honest I have a feeling that if I do that that, that pesky pink's going to come through again. 
so I might just have to leave uh, leave well alone because it's like I had a teal layer on and then I painted it white and when I painted it white the pink came through so the pink came through the layer of teal and coloured the the um, bits pink unbelievable right I'm going to take some um, different mica elements now and hopefully these will sort of just adhere when the embossing powder melts and we'll just have that bit of extra um, texture. Okay, to that. Um, let me see what else have we got. We've got some sort of glass bits as well. I love this, just sort of sprinkle it all on, see what happens. And you can't, it's not an exact science, you can't plan it too much, it's just going to end up how it ends up and there's not an awful lot you can do about it, so um, I think that's quite quite interesting. Okay, and then um, I've got some teal flakes as well, which I would just like to put in. And then what I will do is we will just start to heat that with a heat gum and uh, see what happens. So I'll just put that in and then I think I will be going down for my dinner. Oops, just spilled a load of that all over the place. Typical, typical, typical. Right, I will just try and heat part of it on camera so that you can see it um, and then I'll do the rest off camera and hopefully it sh should, as I said, stick not too bad because we've got that glistening on. Now we're still having bits of it blow off and that's kind of part of the course but we'll see how how we go once your embossing powder starts to melt you find less of the elements blow off and um, all the elements start to stick so I don't know if you can see that there it's beginning to bubble away and we're beginning to get different different textures and bits and pieces going on there so I'm just going to finish the rest of that off camera We'll just do um, a little bit of watercolouring. I have got my Jane Davenport paints here. So I have, this one is, this one is um, Glitzy Palette. I know Hachanda have had these on in the past. I know that they do quite a lot with Jane Davenport. I've not checked to see if they're on at the minute. Um, and I've got paint till you faint. So what I tend to do with my watercolour palette is I will just grab um, a water spray and just spray the whole palette just to get it activated and moving. Now watercolour painting is really easy. It's um, You just need to let the water do the work for you. Um, and not overthink it too much um, and I think if you do that um, you're you're pretty good um, to go and yeah the other thing as well if it bleeds out I'm actually going to be cutting it out in the in the project but to be honest a lot of like artists have this sort of funny bled out effect as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put um, a little bit of water on first as my base. I should mention that I did use stays on ink and that is because I knew I was going to be using water and that's not going to move um, with with the water. So I'm just putting a wash of water on first and then as I said I am just going to grab um, some of these colours and I'm just going to tap, tap it in and then let the water do the work. So we've got um, that the water is gradually sort of moving it. I'm not doing much to it. Um, quite often it can maybe look a bit contrived um, when, when we're trying to push it to do what we want it um, to do. But if we just let it do its own thing. So what I'm doing is I've put a bit of green there. I'm now going to gradually get a yellow and I'm going, going to go down the other side and then just let the two edges find each other. And that way we'll get a really natural blend um, to that and what I may do as well just bring some of that yellow in there what I may do as well is just grab a little bit of um, a bluish colour and just um, go around the extremities in that and that'll just um, give it that tonal tonal value so just in the shadow areas but as I said I'm not 
overly thinking it, I am just letting the water do its work. And the fact that we're under the sea, if we've got a very loose watery um, colouring, it is going to work perfectly. I mean, you can't get a better theme um, for having like a loose thing. So as you can see, nothing overly spectacular special there, um, just letting the water um, do its thing. So again, I'll go and I will do the rest of um, the seahorse. Again, I'm just popping the water in first and um, going with my palest colour and getting that in and just letting the the what the paint will not go any further than the water. So wherever you've put put the water, the, that is where the paint will go. It's not going to travel any further than that. And then again, I will just add that green. Okay, and a little bit um, of the blue. Now, because where I'm recording ahead and it's not live TV, I can actually just pause the camera now and I will finish off um, the rest of this and we'll look at then how putting in some extra details um, with watercolour. Okay, so my seahorse is beginning to dry. It's not fully dry, but the elements that I want to um, are dry. So what I'm going to do, I want to give it nice pink cheeks. So I'm just going to add a load of water to the cheek area there. And I am going to lift it out and bleach it. Just lift that colour out a little bit. So I'm just going to do that a few times. So the reason I do this, if I had tried to go in and do the pink at the time that I was colouring the rest of it, um, the red from the pink and the yellow and the blue that made the green would end up with a brown colour. And I don't want a seahorse um, with a brown colour. And if you want it, then that's fine. But if you want a more distinctive colour, then I find this the easiest way to do. So I'm just kind of lifting that colour out and then it's going to um, stay truer to the pink. It's not going to bleed out and make a muddy brown colour, which is what I am trying to avoid. So I'm just going to, put, again, put a bit of water in that area. Because it's dried round about it, That even though I put the pink in, it will blend but it's, it shouldn't make that sort of muddy colour and it shouldn't go into the rest of the face either. It's only going to go where the water is. So I'll just let that sit um, there. Now I also just want to add a few more touches of pink. So I've got, these bits are just dry. Now I'm going to cut this out. So if I go past the lines, that's okay because it's going to get cut out. So again, it's not... Um, not worrying about it overly, so I'm just going to add the touches of pink in there just to sort of give it a bit of a um, contrast. And again, I am just going to, in the love heart of his little seahorse nose, again, I'm just going to get some water and we'll just lift that out a little bit. And then we'll see it all sort of merges and blends beautifully together, but we don't end up with that sort of mud effect. Um, we don't end up with any nasty looking browns that we weren't planning on. So I will just leave that in there and um, we can maybe just put a few touches of pink just down the, just down the side just to sort of bring, bring it out a little bit. I think it's quite nice with, um, especially with an underwater scene, it's going, um, the seahorse, they, they look very iridescent don't they and they sort of pick up the colours that are, are surrounding them. So I'm just putting touches there. I've not I've not bleached it this time because I'm not wanting that full pink colour. I'm just sort of almost wanting a reflection um, of what's going on um, around. So I'm just maybe going to put a little bit in it in the corner of the tail here. And then we've got those few touches of pink. And again, I'll let that dry. Um, this will probably be the end of this particular clip. I'll let that dry and then at a later point we'll do something with it. And use some alcohol inks. So I have got a piece of acetate here and I'm going to start off just by getting a whole load of blending solution on. So we've got plenty of stuff on there so that we can get things moving. This is the sort of technique that once you start, <laughs> it's a very difficult to um, keep Moving. So I'm going to put some different colours 
on here. So again, I'm thinking of my ocean theme. So I've got some blues, some yellows, some greens, and we're just going to um, blend all of these together. Now, because that's, I've got quite a lot of alcohol solution on there for this moment in time, I'm just going to sort of move the page itself just so that we get a bit of a coverage all over. And that gives us a starting a starting point to start um, playing with. So I'm just going to keep adding different colours in. And this is the thing you could get, because um, it's seaside and I want some reeds, so we could sort of blow it with a straw. And we'll get some different effects doing that. And I'm just going to keep... Um, building this up and creating different cells um, with um, these sort of green and gold colours. So I think I've got a mixture of the Tim Holtz ones, some Adirondack, um, I've got some refills of my um, colouring pens. So any alcohol ink that you've got will um, play together really, really nicely. And um, we can get some really interesting effects going on. Oops. So that's been a bit darker than I intended. That's really not what I wanted at all. But we can break that up and create some cool effects. So now if I just put some of the alcohol solution in there, we will get a little bit of movement. As I said, I can get a burst of yellow in there as well. And just keep playing around um, and until, until you're happy. So um, I think that's sort of covered that technique and I'm aware that with it being the acetate there's a bit of a glare. So. so I'm just going to leave that to dry and then we'll come back and do some stamping. Okay. So I've stamped out this sentiment from the stamp set and I'm just going to chop it into bits like so. And then I'm just going to ink the edges with my um, peacock feathers. My mermaid lagoon distress ink has dried out which is a bit sad so I, I will have to rectify that at some point. Okay so I'm just going to chop these down like so. I'm not worried about it being straight in fact I'd prefer it if it wasn't because it's going to look more sort of journaly and quirky even though I'm not making a journal. That's <laughs> sort of the look I'm going for. Okay, so I'm just going to um, add a bit of ink because this is going onto a green background and the white against it will be a bit too stark. So that um, background that we made with the alcohol inks, um, it's going to go on to that. So I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to do my usual black pen trick and just edge, edge those. And if I can find my black pen. So I have got some acetate that I have used alcohol inks on and I am just going to add this sentiment to the acetate. So I've got my Phil Martin glue. I know this can be found on the website. That's where I bought it from. <laughs> I bought this from Hachanda. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that sentiment on there. So we've got friends come and go. Um, like waves on the ocean but true ones I've just noticed this one here I thought I was all prepped <laughs> this one hasn't had a black line I like to put a black line around everything because it really helps to frame things okay so I'm just going to grab that and just put a little edging on it okay so oops stick like an octopus on your face. So I'm just going to put that in the centre and while I'm here I'm going to also just adhere a couple of um, sequins because so I am going to make a shaker but I think it's quite nice when you're shaking it about if some of the sequins stay in place. So I'm just grab, getting blobs of glue and then I've got my little picker up and I'm just going to pop some of those down onto um, the acetate and then I'll just pop that aside for a moment. 
Okay, so I just thought I'd show you a little tip that I do when I'm working from home. I tend to lay stuff down without sticking it down and then take a little photograph of it and then I sort of follow that photograph um, to get an idea for layout. So that way I can sort of practice what I want to do um, and get get the layout right. And then sometimes I find you get the layout right so that you like it and you... Um, get everything ready. So I've got another piece of acetate here, sorry, interrupting myself. Um, yeah, you get it all so you like it and then <laughs> you can't remember what you did and then it doesn't seem to be quite the same as when you first put it together. Um, so this is a tip that I do. I tend to do, put it all out, take a photograph of it and then I sort of follow the photograph. So what I'm doing here is that this is a piece of acetate that will go again into my frame. So I'm just building up Ollie the octopus first, um, like so, and then I'll be chopping the excess bits off, um, and then I will stick this to the inside of the frame. So I'm just going to do do that like so, okay, and then I am just going to flip it over, and I'm going to cut these excess pieces off. Oops, like so. Right. Okay, so I've now got my frame and I am going to put a generous amount of the glue right on the inside. But I've picked a frame that is, because I'm going to make a shaker, I've picked a frame that's got a really big depth to it. And because of that, and we should be able to sort of fill it with loads of goodies and we will have a really sort of quirky shaker style card so I'm just going to pop that in like so and just stick that down okay oops so this glue will dry clear, so we will be okay. And then if I just see there, like we've got a little ollie popping out, popping out the front there. So I'm just going to adhere that down. It's having a little bit of difficulty there. So I'm just going to hold that down for a second. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm going to put a generous amount of sequins in there as sprinkles. And now I'm going to get my second piece of acetate and I am just going to glue it to the back of the frame. So again, I'm going to put a generous amount of glue on the back here and just stick that um, down. So I'll be back once I've got that adhered. So Okay, so now all I'm going to do is embellish the front of um, the frame. So I'm going to stick a little seahorse on there. That's the main feature. So this time I'm just using some hot glue um, just to get this adhered nice and quickly. So we'll ooh, undo that. It's going on to a new glue stick so that's always always seems to be a bit interesting when you have not quite mastered that yet. Okay so I'm just going to use some of these elements that I have taken from the stamp set and put all of those together. I'm trying to put this in shot so that you can see it but without the reflection um, showing through. Okay, so I'm just going to layer up some of these elements like so. And then we've got a little pretty seaside, or under the sea I should say, um, shaker frame. So I'll just uh, pop those together. So I'm just building up the elements. I'm wanting the corner to look you know nice and full. I'm thinking of like under the sea you've got all the corals and all the pretty little elements um, going on so I'm sort of wanting to represent that a little bit. I've totally gone against my own advice here and haven't uh, checked my phone to follow <laughs> to follow the pattern that I had. Okay but I think I think I'm still happy with that, so that's all good. So we'll just um, pop pop that down, and then I'll maybe put another little shell at the top. So I've sort of created um, oops, created.
create a little corner frame there. And now that this okay, so that's my little shaker frame all complete. I hope you have enjoyed that. If you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing and I'll be back again very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.